Assalamu alaikum dear students here is a good news uh, today we are going to start uh, real analysis 2 and this is our first lecture of real analysis 2 uh, in real analysis 2 first of all we, we will discuss uh, uh, the Riemann stages integral and this chapter uh, I am going to start from uh, book W. Rudin, Walter Rudin book this is chapter number 7 okay uh, before uh, starting formal definitions I want to tell you about two words which uh, we are using frequently one is antiderivative and the other is integral okay so uh, antiderivative see if I want to find uh, cos x dx this is this symbol uh, is used uh, uh, for antiderivative so when I want to find antiderivative cos x it means that uh, I want to find a function fx for which uh, cos x uh, uh, is its derivative right so we want to find a function fx such that such that f dash x is equal to cos x right whenever I uh, find antiderivative of some function it means that I need to know a function whose derivative is cos x so I want to find a function for which whose derivative is cos x right so what is that function we know that cos x dx is equal to sin x plus c so this is your fx right so sin x plus c uh, is a function for which the derivative is cos x okay so in general when you want to find fx dx this means that you want to find a function fx plus c with d by dx fx plus c is equal to fx so r you can write you take derivative of this f of x this is f dash x so f dash x and you know derivative of c is cons cons c is constant so derivative is zero this is equal to fx right this is the formal definition now now you can write the definition uh, but the concept is that derivative of function fx is equal to this is your fx where f dash x is equal to dx sorry f dash is equal to f small fx okay this is the definition of antiderivative now we are using uh, frequently another word which is uh, uh, integral uh, what is that word? Let's see with the aid of an example. Okay. Suppose uh, we want to find integral from 1 to x dx. So generally the perception is among students that a to b fx dx uh, is the area this is area and uh, the curve f on a b okay this is the general perception about uh, a to b fx dx but this is not the case always you see if you integrate this you will get this is x square by 2 minus 1 to 1 this is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 so answer 0 so if I mean to say always that 
this is the area under this curve here function a x from minus 1 to 1 so where is that area the answer is 0 where is that there should be some area so uh, there is a little diff difference between uh, uh, these two e, e, though uh, the main idea of this integral is concerned with the area we can find area under the curve uh, with the help of this integral. But you need to see uh, one thing is that why, why, why we are not getting area. If you see the graph, if you see the graph of this function, here function is fx is equal to x and interval is minus 1 to 1. You are taking this. Uh, function fx is equal to x on minus 1 to 1. So this is uh, this function is you know it's a straight line right and say this is your 1 and this is your minus 1. Why we are getting area 0? In fact we are finding integral we are not finding area. You see here uh, this is the point this is 0 where this function is crossing x-axis. So your area has been divided into two uh, parts. Mean your this interval has been divided into two sub-intervals. So minus 1 to 0, this is one interval and the other is 1 to 0. And this is the point where function is uh, crossing x-axis. So the integral from 0 to 1, if you see that the integral from 0 to 1 is giving you value 1 by 2 and the integral from minus 1 to 0 is giving you value minus 1 by 2. So if you add up these two, I mean so minus 1 to 1 x dx if you add like this minus 1 to 0 x dx this is 1 by 2 and a2 is 0 to 1 x dx this is minus 1 by 2 so this is 1 by 2 and this is minus 1 by 2 so if you add these two directly a1 plus a2 you are finding an integral but in case of area you have you shall have to add these two absolutely so uh, i want to summarize the idea is when you add a1 plus a2 directly which is 0 this is in fact the integral from a to b fx dx and if you add a1 plus a2 absolutely this is in fact area under the curve uh, f from a to b but there are some other uh, points which we have to learn one is uh, whether your function is defined on A and B, whether it is defined or not, uh, whether there are some points where function is discontinuous. There are many other things. So we will start uh, formally with the help of definition. I just want to tell you that we are frequently using these two words. One is antiderivative. Antiderivative all mean, means that you are interested to find a function for which the given function is the derivative and secondly you are using the word integral so integral is concerned with the area uh, of your function f within the interval uh, a to b but not always giving you area directly you must have to see first whether your function uh, what is uh, type of your function uh, there may be some other uh, hurdles like uh, if you write this function instead of this 1 over x okay 1 over x if you like this right fx is equal to 1 over x minus 1 1 to 1 you see this function is not bounded so f of 0 is not defined you have no value at 0 so there is a problem again again you have a problem you cannot find area of this so where should i turn this to uh, for discussion so we will discuss another chapter after this chapter 
so called improper integral where you may have uh, a as minus infinity b as infinity or uh, you may have a function which is not uh, defined on some uh, endpoints or within the, uh, the endpoints so means that either you have uh, infinite range of integration or uh, you may have a function which is not defined at all the points of a and b close inter a b close interval so we will attach new concept with these ideas in a later chapter but now <coughs> we want to discuss uh, uh, the concept of a uh, uh, riemann integral what is that concept so i am giving you one diagram and with the help of one diagram we will elaborate the idea okay what is that idea you know that if you have some regular shapes you have some regular shapes like this is a triangle right you can find its area suppose you have triangle another curve from here to there this is your curve say this is your a this is your b and from a to b it's your function you no need to find the idea of riemann integral you can find it here directly because uh, you are finding a triangle so whenever you have some regular shapes curve under the curve you can find their areas directly like rectangle uh, square quadrilateral and uh, trapezium or some other polygons but if your region of integration i mean region of your desired area is an irregular shaped curve then it's not so easy to find area under that curve right then we will use the idea of riemann integral what is that idea suppose you have a curve uh, of the type like this and you want to find area for this curve from a to b this is your a x is equal to a right and you you may assume that this is x not and this is your b and you may assume that this is equal to uh, x say uh, n is equal to b okay so you need to find area a to b fx dx area under the curve a to b fx dx of course your function is positive above x axis we have no such points where function is crossing x axis we we are giving actually the idea for uh, such curves so that is our first step to know the points where uh, function has some uh, uh, points uh, on x axis and then secondly we will use the idea now suppose you have a curve of the type of course we need to know this area we need to find this area i i need to find this area like this 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 area okay this is the area uh, is the desired area you need to know but uh, you see this is not uh, a regular shaped curve so we cannot apply uh, those formulas which are available for a regular shaped curve so here we will use the idea of riemann what is that idea instead of finding area directly why not you add some riemann series that why not you add some points in your uh, interval in your domain so this domain was so we we are adding some points say i am taking some x1 then x2 uh then x2 okay uh say then x3 x4 
and so on. Okay, I have some points. So first idea is to introduce points in your interval. So if you are taking interval, taking interval AB, if you are taking interval AB, you introduce points in this interval like this. You take A is equal to X naught, then there should be some X1 because we are on X axis and LE number on the right is greater than the previous one, X1, then you have X2 and then X3 and so on, Xn which is equal to B. The first idea is to introduce points uh, in your uh, interval AB and uh, uh, the set of these points is called the, a partition of this point, this interval. So on real line we call a partition is in fact the uh, introduction of points, is a set of points lying in the interval, is a partition of this set. So if I write like this, x0, x1, x2, so on, xn, with this condition that x0 is less than x1, which is less than x2, and so on less than xn, xn is equal to b, and x0 is equal to a, then this set is called a partition of this interval a, b. So first step is to find some points in your interval a, b, means you find a partition of a, b, here you are free. Remember you are free to choose. So how many partitions you can find for a given interval a, b? You can find infinite points, infinite points, infinite ways to select points. Suppose you are selecting just 100 points in a partition. Then again, uh, these 100 points can be assumed in an infinite way. So that's why even a partition of 100 points can be selected by infinite ways, right? And what I am saying, first, you can find any number of points, one thing, and second is that you can find any idea to get the points uh, in that partition. I will tell you later that uh, how can you find points in a closed interval, A, B, okay. So the idea is, first step is just find the points uh, in your given interval A, B to have a partition of that point. Then corresponding to partition, suppose we have these points and uh, we have labeled the partition point on X axis like X naught, okay, it's your domain values, this is your X1, X2 and if you find a rectangle corresponding to X1, if you find a rectangle corresponding, you, you have this rectangle, okay. Now, there are two ideas. We can, even we cannot find the area of this because uh, it's a curve, it's not a line and this is not like a trapezium. So that's why we, we can find a rectangle. So there are two ways to find its rectangle. Suppose uh, we are finding a rectangle from its minimum value, right? You know, in this interval, in this interval, if I consider this interval, x0, x1, you will see that this is the minimum value. So I, I call this minimum value as m1. What is m1 here? m1 is the minimum of fx when you are taking x from x0 less or equal to x less or equal to x1. Okay. So corresponding to this small interval, you have values of this function, you have infinite values, but you see that the smallest value is, one value is this, 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 there are infinite values, but the smallest value is this, this is your m1. And similarly, I can find this length, this length is in fact x1 minus x0, and you label this length as delta x1. Now, if this height is m1 and this 
uh, base length is delta x1 what is the area of this rectangle the area of this rectangle is in fact m1 m1 delta x1 but one thing is clear here you see that this area we are losing this area we are losing this area because this rectangle through uh, minimum value is covering only area below this line but this is the area which is lesser than the required area so that's why we are losing this area remember and secondly if i find the uh, rectangle from here you see how can you find its minimum value so minimum value is here here is the minimum value i can find rectangle from here this value is in fact this value is say this value is m2 so from this interval if you find all the values of your this function f so you will see that in this domain the minimum value is this so this is the minimum value we we are saying this minimum value as m2 and uh, the area must be m2 delta x2 because we are taking this as delta x2 of course this length the base length must be equal to x2 minus x1 similarly if you find this rectangle so its minimum value is this these all are the uh, larger values than this value so this is the uh, rectangle from lower side we are saying rectangles from lower sides right and uh, the area must be m3 delta x3 and so and so forth right if you find this rectangle x4 where is the minimum minimum value so this is the minimum value right you will find this and this is is in fact m4 delta x4 this is your this length is uh, x4 minus x3 we are calling this as delta x4 right but one thing is clear one thing is very much clear we are losing the area we are not finding this area we are losing the area we are losing this area we are losing this area because the area you are finding from lower lower values from minimum values if you add similarly and so on the last uh, uh, must be from here this is your mn delta xn now if you add these all areas you are getting approximate area and of course this is not the desired area this area must be lesser than the area required okay so if you add all these what do you have m1 delta x1 plus m2 delta x2 plus so on plus m say n delta x1 suppose you you have introduced n points in your this interval i means you have taken n points in your partition of course n plus 1 point first point is a and n minus 1 points you have introduced in this uh, interval are rather other than a and b so so then of then from these uh, lower values you are finding the areas of rectangles then all these areas you will see that you have some area and we call this sum as l p f i mean p was the partition this partition and f was your function this was the function this was the function okay and l stat uh, lower sums so if you add all these you are getting a symbol lpf now one thing is very much clear that your lower sum is lesser than your desired area but he says remon says that uh, 
uh, Raymond gave an idea and uh, the idea of uh, refinement. Uh, he said that you can refine your uh, uh, part uh, partition. Means that if you add even a single more point in your partition, then the new partition is called a refinement. Suppose you add one more point. I am adding here one more point. Say, I am adding here one point. Say here, one point. Say, and this, it's lower this, and this, it's lower this. You see, we have included this area. We have included this area. So if you define, or you say that this is another partition, because uh, uh, you are adding more points uh, in the previous partition, uh, you are refining the previous partition. What do you mean by a refinement? If you add even a single point in your previous partition, then the new partition is called a refinement of the previous partition. So from your sum, if you, you have seen that, if you add one more point, you are including the area. Now our loss is uh, uh, smaller than the previous one. Similarly, if you add one point here, so for this, lower sum is this. This area has been included and for this, this. So you see this area, you have included this area, okay? So if you are increasing your points, you are getting more area. Similarly, if you add a point here, you will see its floor is this and its floor is this. You have added this area. So adding more and more points, your lower sums, areas through lower sum is uh, getting more and more, right? is becoming more better and then again you see that again we are losing some area so one thing is notable that whenever you are finding areas of your rectangles through lower sums the a this always must be lesser than the desired area this always must be lesser than the desired area <coughs> so uh, what we have done we have calculated lpf and what is this? This is summation mi delta xi, i varies from 1 to n. Of course, what is here p? This was the one p. And if you change your partition, you take another partition, then you refine, then you refine. Okay? Suppose you have 100 partitions. Suppose you have uh, 100 partitions, then uh, find lower sums through all these hundred partition so can you find which one would be the better the one which has greater area because uh, you are finding the areas of these rectangles through lower sums and every time lower sum is giving you area which is smaller than the desired area lesser than the desired area but uh, you have seen that by adding more points you are improving your areas so can you find that which area through these suppose one lower sum is you have the, the p1f so you have p2f and then lower p3f and suppose you have p100f you are finding lower sum through different partitions p1 corresponding to p1 corresponding to p2 corresponding to p3 corresponding to p4 and so on up to p100 and p1000 you may have can you find that which one of them would be the better? Which would be the larger? Because we are always on the lower side and we are always lesser than, we are always finding the area lesser than the desired area. So uh, of these lower sums, remember these all are the areas through lower sums. So through lower sum, which would be the better? The better one would be that which must be greater than all of these. So, the better area is in fact the supremum of all these areas, right? So that's why remember, this is corresponding to one particular partition. So, if you want to select a better area, then you must have to apply soup on this lower sum where P belong to, uh, stylish P, where stylish P is the set of all partitions of your given interval AB. We will write, okay.
So till then, you have seen that this is the idea of uh, uh, finding lower sums, and we call these sums as the lower sum. Then he is saying that you can also find the upper sums. You can also find the upper sums. Okay, what is that idea? So the idea is. Again, you have like uh, this curve, and you have x a is equal to x naught, then x one, then x two, then x three, x four, then so on, then x n. Which is equal to b. Okay, again find the rectangles and then uh, through maximum values of your sub intervals. Right now you have to find the rectangles uh, with the help of uh, maximum values from your sub intervals. Right, and then you will add these areas and we will call these areas as the upper sums. Okay. So find the area of uh, say it's your x1, it's your x1, it's your x2, say it's your x2, say your x2. So here, where is the upper sum? Upper sum is here. This is your upper sum. Okay, this is your area, and you you have seen that we are adding. Some additional area. This area was not required. That this blue area, this blue area, was not required. So what is the maximum value? Its maximum value say m1, and this length was delta x1. This was delta x1. So area of this rectangle would be m1 delta x1. Then again, find this is your x2. Where is the maximum value? This is the maximum value in this interval. In this interval, x1 to x2. See, uh, like this, like this. This is your graph. And can you find this is your x2? This is your x3. This one is the maximum value. So you you will have rectangle through the, here. This, yes. This is your maximum value for this interval. For and for this interval, this was your maximum value. For this interval, this was your maximum value, and you have constructed your rectangle through upper sum, through upper value, through supremum. So, for this small interval, this is the maximum value, and you will find a rectangle from here. Okay. So this area, this is M2. In fact, the area is M2 delta x2. Uh, you see again. You have some additional area. In fact, <coughs> this is the area which was not desired, but you, your upper sum is including that area as well. Okay, from here, this is your third. Where is the maximum value? This is the maximum value. So from here, you will find an upper rectangle. Okay, this is the maximum. So area, this area, you know this. This length is your m3. Okay, so the area of this rectangle, this rectangle is m3 delta x3. Then this, then this, then this. Its upper sum is this. Its upper is this. Its upper is this, this. This one, this. Okay, you have seen that we we are finding additional areas. These are the additional areas. These are the additional areas. Okay, so and so on. This is m n delta x n. So the areas. But again, what is the idea of Riemann? Riemann says that again, if you refine your partition, if you will refine your partition, then you will see that. Your area would be 
near to the desired area okay suppose i am taking here uh, i'm taking here one point say here i am taking one adding one more point if i am adding one more point here what is the upper sum is this is this in this what upper sum is this but here upper sum is this so we have excluded this area if you add one more point here then its upper sum is this its upper sum is this we have excluded this area if you add one point here you will see that its upper sum is this and its upper sum is this we have excluded this area so you have seen that by refining your partition if you are adding more points in your partition you are uh, getting a better area i mean you are losing your additional area after every increment but uh, so in this way you continue by adding the points of course you are getting close and close and close but uh, the idea through some of these uh, areas of rectangles uh, what we term as upf upf means upper sums corresponding to a partition p of your function f of course uh, your intervals ab close in two okay so what is the idea is summation mi delta xi i will from 1 to n and one more thing is to remember that this is not the case that these distances are always equal anyhow for sake of your convenience you can keep delta xi is equal to some constant number no problem you can always choose as uh, uh, you have gone through the idea in your bsc classes where we were always taking delta xi as the constant that was b minus a over n like this i mean uh, if you want to have n points in your partition okay so the idea is this is a lower uh, sum of your function f corresponding to a partition p which is small mi delta xi where of course what is mi you know that what is mi mi is in fact infimum of your fx when uh, Uh, your uh, uh, x was lying between x i less than equal to uh, x i minus one less than equal to x less than equal to x i. Okay, because your length was x i minus x i minus one. This was that x i. This is in fact the i th interval. When you are talking about uh, first m one, put i is equal to one here. This was x naught to x one. I mean. Corresponding to x naught to x one, between this sub interval, your minimum value was m one, which is in fact the infimum of f x uh, within the range. You find all the values corresponding to x naught to x one and find the minimum value, which is your m one. So this is in fact the uh, minimum value corresponding to i th interval uh, of your function f x f x f. infimum f so uh, the lowest value right and similarly what is mi mi is in fact sup of fx where uh, uh, x i minus 1 less or equal to x less or equal to x i you can always you can write like this as well i mean sup of functional values in your i th interval similarly M one is the maximum value of your first interval. M two is the maximum value of second interval, and so on. Here could be some i th interval. Okay, so in this way, you have lower sums of your function f corresponding to partition p, and you have upper sums. And again, you have seen that every time upper sum is going away from your desired area, it's adding some more area, which is the desired area. then which one should be the better if you have 100 upper sum corresponding to 100 partition of the same interval then which would be the better one which the better one is the lesser one the better one 
would be the lesser one because you have seen that every time a person area of a person is going away from your desired area every time your area is going away from your desired area and what would be the better if you are taking 100 partitions of the same interval AB the one which is smaller than all of them that's why okay so that's why the Riemann by thinking on these ideas that one is always uh, inside one is remaining inside and one is remaining outside so one is leaving some area all the time and one is adding some area all the time that's why uh, between mini partitions if all are finding their lower sums the one would be the better whose area is better and if you are working through upper sum the one would be the better if corresponding area is smaller that's why you have a sense now this makes sense that's why we can define lower and upper integrals so he has defined our lower and upper integral is that but remember you can do this if your function is bounded if your function is not defined you are getting some points uh, or you are getting some infinite range or you are getting some points either on a or b or between a and b where function is not assigning its value then you cannot discuss this that's why this is one of the fundamental condition is that function is bounded since function is bounded function is attaining its values and that's why function must be bounded on sub interval as well since it is bounded so corresponding to every sub interval you can find minimum value and you can find maximum value you can find minimum of your function and you can find supremum of your function right that's why this is a very fundamental condition is that function sh should be bounded if function is bounded on the entire interval a b then it must be bounded on some interval that's why in every sub interval you can find infimum and supremum okay so uh, that's why you, you have a definition a to b if i'm writing a line bar line here this is indicating that lower integral this is indicating that it's a lower integral so f of x dx this is a lower integral it's simple so this is in fact uh, you are finding lpf lower sum and which one would be the better the one which has a better area so whenever you are taking sums through low uh, uh, through the lower value these are called lower sum so you take here so and of course p belong to stylish p remember stylish p uh, is the set of all possible partitions of a b suppose stylish p indicates the set of all possible partitions of a b so p belong to stylish p it means that this is not now a single point this is there you may have many points but one of those which is giving the better area is corresponding to supremum because you know that lower sum is always leaving your sum area we are losing some of your, your area your desired area every time so the one which would be the better is in fact the supremum of all those area corresponding to p where p belong to stylish p means that you are finding areas corresponding to all the partitions then you are taking supremum over all those partitions and the supremum and this would be termed as lower integral this is called lower integral okay and you can label this as a similarly the upper integral would be upper integral a, here you are writing bar here fx dx would be upf upper sum of a function f corresponding to partition b then which one is the better if you are have having more areas and all through upper sum 
is one which would be the infimum. So that's why you will take here infimum of P belong to stoilish P. This is number B. Now, now Raymond said that you have seen that one is always giving you area lower than the desired area. And one is always giving you the area larger than the desired area, more than the desired area. One is giving you lesser than the desired area and the other is giving you the larger than the desired area. And if these two are equal, if these two are equal, what does it mean? This means that you are finding the exact area. Okay? If 1 and 2 are equal, if A and B both are equal, equal, then we say that, we say that F is Raman integrable, Raman integrable. Right? Remember, this is very logical and very sensible that one is always away from the area and uh, above giving up more than the area desired and one is giving lesser than the area desired. That's why both are equal. This means that you have defined so beautifully that your lower area is approximately to the exact area and your upper area is approximately to the exact area. That's why, in fact, you are finding the exact area. Okay? So, in this way, and we, we write this as, we write this as, F belong to stylish R on it. This is a symbol. F belong to stylish R means, F is Raman integrable, on your given interval AB and the common value and the common value is denoted as A to B FX TX. This is the common value. Hence, what have uh, you learned from today's lecture is that this means that a to B, this is uh, soup of P belong to stylish P, LPF, which is equal to lower integral, FX DX, which would be equal to A to B, FX DX, which would be equal to A to B, fx dx which was the infimum of p belong to stylish p uh, p u p f now this is the proper definition this is the common value you know uh, first you try to find uh, uh, lower sums then you have uh, their maximum value supreme this was the lower integral and lower integral is equal to the actual integral and this is also equal to the same integral because lower and upper are equal and their equal value is in fact this and what was this this was the infimum of uh, UPF upper sum through upper sums okay right uh, today we have uh, defined a very typical definition in the next lecture I will try to elaborate with the aid of examples uh, and uh, we will write formally uh, today, actually, I tried to introduce the idea of Raman integral and I have told you something about uh, two words. One was the antiderivative and the other was integral. Okay. Thank you very much. Allah Hafiz.